So you've just bought a bike computer like this Garmin Edge, and sure you can press start and stop and record all of your rides and upload them to Strava, but it's a lot of money and you can get a lot more use out of it actually on your bike when you're riding. So if you want to know how to set up your data screens properly, what all that data means and how to use the navigation, then I'm going to show you all of that in this video and more. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe if you want more advice like this in the future. So just a quick word on choosing the right Garmin for you, and I won't go into full detail about this, but a good starting point is the 530, which will have all of the data that you need. It'll have map navigation and the ability to pair it with your phone and your sensors. Now the 830 is almost exactly the same in form and function, but it's touchscreen for that added bit of extra cost, which you might think is worth it if you're using it a lot on your bike. The next in line is the 1030 Plus, which is a bigger computer, so it'll have a bigger data screen and it will be easier to navigate as well with a bigger map. You also have a bigger battery life. It'll last 24 hours, maybe even 48 hours if you set it up correctly with some battery saving modes. And this is something that Blake has done a video on in the past where he's paired it with his Garmin watch and that has given him the ability to record sleep scores, stress scores, and then his Garmin will actually tell him a training plan. One of the first things that you'll notice when you turn on your Garmin is that there'll be a different profile screen that you can access. So for my 530 here, I've got mountain, indoor and road. Now you can change the name of these and you can add some more if you want to, but this basically allows you to have different collections of data on your data screen, depending on what genre you are doing. So for example, when you're mountain biking, you might wanna concentrate on your speed and your distance, for example, but maybe when you're doing indoor training, you might want to focus on heart rate or heart rate zones. So this just gives you the ability to customize different profiles so that you can be more specific when you're doing different genres. So you wanna find your main menu button. So this is down and then go to settings, select and then activity profiles in order to edit each of those profiles. So if you go into mountain, so go to data screens, enter, and then you can change what you see on your first data screen. For the 830, or well, all of the touchscreen compatible Garmin's, you can actually press and hold on certain sections of your data screen and edit it on the fly while you're riding. So I've tapped that, I can now choose speed instead, and you can choose things like average speed or exact speed. And now you will have the speed there. Now obviously Garmin has navigation on it and I will get to that in a bit, but if you come to upload any courses onto your Garmin so that you can follow a route that you've created or that someone else has created, you will notice that you will get some bonus screens. So for example, you will get climbing profile, which is pictured like a graph. And I like to swipe down or click down to that profile when I'm on a climb as it will show you exactly where you are on that climb, so you'll know how far you've gone or how far you have to go. Another screen that will get added with a course is a kind of ghost rider. So you can program a personal best or something of a goal in terms of when you want to finish a course, and it will have a ghost rider on the screen so you know whether you're close to your personal best or to the time that you would like to achieve. Now, new to Garmin recently is some mountain biking metrics specific for mountain biking. And we have jump metrics, which tells you how high and how far you've been jumping. So you can record your progress there. 
It also has a grit rating, which tells you how difficult the course is that you've just ridden or the trail is that you've just ridden. The higher the number, the gnarlier the trail has been. And a flow rating as well, which you want to be on a lower number, which means you've done less braking and you've been more flowy in your track. So there's a few things that you can pair your Garmin to, uh, one being your phone so you can record data in apps, and another being all of your sensors, so like a heart rate monitor, any power meters that you have in cranks or pedals, for example, or any cadence monitors which you can attach to your cranks. Or if you have something like Shimano Di2, it will bring up your gearing as well and your cadence from the Di2 computer as well. Now, to pair with your Garmin, there's a couple of ways to do it according to what sensor you're trying to pair with. It could be Bluetooth, which is usually what you'll use on your phone, and it could be Ant Plus, which is usually what you get with a lot of your sensors. Once you've paired with things like your heart rate monitor and your power meter, your Garmin will then automatically calculate things like your heart rate zones, your stress score, your FTP, which is your functional threshold power, and your VO2 max. And all of this would be very useful for you if you have a training plan or if you're wanting to record things perhaps in the Garmin app or a software package of your choice to see how you're progressing as your training goes on. Once you've paired to your phone, you can then play around with the settings in your app in order to work out what you want displayed on your Garmin as well. So you can actually get your phone messages pop up on your screen while you're riding if you want that to. You can also pair with AccuWeather apps so that you can see what the weather's about to do. And you can even auto-sync with the app and make sure that the app then auto-syncs with other programs like Strava, for example. And that way, you don't even have to plug your Garmin into your computer and upload anything. It'll just pair with the Strava app on your phone and everything will be there. Garmin also has the opportunity to pair with trail forks and commute in order to save some favorite courses and then they can be displayed on your Garmin automatically so that if you want to go out and follow that route, you just have to find it in the courses. Now, obviously this device is designed to be a GPS unit, so it will always track you as long as it can reach a satellite signal. And this means that it will place you onto a map on one of your screens. Whether you're following a course or not, you'll always know where you are on that map. So you can always zoom out and check out where you want to go, or you can zoom in and look at the finer detail of whether you're on a bridleway, a road, or a footpath. So not only can you navigate by freely moving around the map on your map navigation screen, but you can also upload courses for you to follow. So you can download GPX files from websites, from people that have created GPX files for you to follow, or you can create your own and then download it. And then you get this file uploaded either from your computer straight to your Garmin. And then once you find that map in your courses section, then you can press start and it will give you navigation much like a car satellite navigation system. It will give you turn by turn directions. You can turn on notifications and sounds so that it'll tell you when to turn left and when to turn right or when you've gone off course. Uh, not only can you upload courses or freely follow the map, but there are settings on your Garmin that allow you to create a loop uh, automatically. So Garmin will literally give you a loop to follow based on where you roughly want to go and how far you want to go. 
uh, all I'll say for mountain bikers out there is it uses information as to popular cycled routes based on various different apps, which means that a lot of the time I find that the Garmin gives you road loops because they're more popular than the off-road trails. So I would say stick to that automatic function if you're on a gravel bike or a road bike and maybe just pre-program a loop if you want a mountain bike loop. One of the more recent features that Garmin has added is that they've paired with trail forks. So this is great news for us mountain bikers because now on the map you can see if there are any trails nearby. In fact, you can go to the navigation setting and search for trail forks courses nearby and it will give you a list of nearby clusters of trails which you can then go and explore on further detail. Detail. So this means no more pulling out your phone in order to look at trail forks. It's all there on your screen already. Check out the safety and tracking option. There's some really interesting features in there, including group tracking, which means you can upload and connect to your friends on the same bike ride as you, so that if you go off into different directions, you can see all of your friends on the map so you can easily get back in touch. There is a tracking and incident setting as well, which means once enabled, if you come to a sudden stop, and you're no longer moving, or your speed has gone from a great deal to zero, then it'll assume that you've had an incident or an accident, and it will contact your emergency contact. You can also activate a bike alarm as well, which will go off and alert your phone if you're connected to the app, uh, if your bike is being moved. So hopefully you're more confident to use your Garmin now, especially while riding, and hopefully you've learned a few things from this video. So let me know what's been the most useful down in the comments below, or if you want a more intermediate video going forward, what is it you want to know about the Garmin? But for now, thanks for watching and give us a big old thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.